the mastermind, the professor. What moniker do you go by now since resurrecting AJ's career? <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> From media perspective, it seems strange for me to say, but in December, when we were pestering you for interviews, you very politely said to us, not just in Riyadh, but when we saw you around a Lee Wood fight, not doing it, lads, I'm not doing it. You didn't want to upset the apple cart, didn't want to cause problems. We didn't have Derek James was carrying on. You approached this exactly as someone should approach it. And in boxing, where clout and hits are currency, it's probably you know, played a huge role in not just getting you the job because of your ability, but also the way you've handled it. Yeah, I just think... Do you know what it is? You've got to look at the situation and, OK, if I have a prospect coming through and I want to try and push him, I might do some interviews if we can keep it based on, as much as possible, based on that prospect. In terms of Anthony Joshua, there's not much difference I'm going to make in terms of selling him his fight and promoting him and doing this and doing that. I'm not going to scratch the surface on any of that stuff. So, you know, it just, it, it just doesn't make sense, you know, so... Um, there was all these questions and just, you know, I'm really keen for his performances to do the talking. Was it easy for you, though, in, in the build-up to... Because people do question him so much. People do talk about his state of mind so much, the, the changing of trainers, the moving of countries. I'm sure you've had lots of measured words. I mean, even when we had a chat once, you said, oh, I don't want it to be turned into a headline that's a negative one. But I'm sure you had lots of insightful ways to explain how the relationship was evolving. Yeah, I just think... Um you know, he's an Olympic gold medalist and the two-time two -time unified heavyweight champion of the world. He's already got all these skills. All we've done is just help him understand that. And I think he's got a lot more clarity in terms of how to use the tools that he's, he's got now. And I'd say that's probably, that's probably what we've, we've brought to him. And uh, he's been very respondent to it. So There was a little moment as well um, in December when we were taken upstairs with AJ's team to, to have a chat with him about 10 minutes before this happened last time. And one thing that I did, did pick up, and I could see his long-term team, Naz and KD and Ben sitting down, but the people he was having a laugh and a joke with, just at that moment I saw, was you and Baza. So to, to, to build that bit of camaraderie and to build that trust can sometimes take years, but it seems to be something that has clicked really early. And for AJ, I imagine trust of, of new people and new teams is a, would be an edgy sort of thing to, to, to harvest. Yeah, I just think... I think you've got to have a, a, a sense of emotional intelligence to know, I might not have known this person for 10 years, but I can read the room, you know? He's in the mood for a chat, he's not in the mood for a chat. Um, that was the first camp working with him, but I feel like I, I'm, I'm able to read the room and I knew, you know, when he might want his own bit of space, when he wants to have a, have a laugh and a joke. Um, and just naturally, you know, that, that relationships, you know, there's a lot of similarities in, in the terms of the way he approaches things and thinks as well. So, yeah, I, I understand him. I know you love grabbing the limelight like this for the big interviews and, and putting, in, <laughs> putting your name in lights. But one man who constantly gets a great amount of credit, and I love the stuff he puts out on social media, is Lee Wiley, who doesn't do any interviews, who doesn't want to be interviewed by anyone. Devin raves about him. From what I understand, AJ talks incredibly highly. And me, honestly, when I, when I look back at fights and I see what he's put out sometimes, little boy genius you've got hidden away in that office, haven't you? Yeah, he's a massive, massive part of, of what we do, a massive part. And uh, he's an absolute gem. And uh, he's a, a, a major role and a major importance to, to the results and, and the things that we do down at the gym. So, um, you know, we've got some unbelievable footage that you know we've, we've not put out anywhere of how fights have gone and drills that we've been doing before the fight pre-fight in the changing room so one day all that stuff will come out Tyson did a, a nice interview a couple of days ago from Thailand when he was asked about you linking up and he's been peppered with that AJ's been peppered with that it's this weird sort of love triangle for, for soap opera but it's just boxing and it's just work but he said that he, he thought it should have happened a good couple of years ago and when he was watching AJ fly 5,000 miles to Texas he was thinking Jesus you've got a geezer half hour around the corner it would be perfect for you yeah look I just think one day you know they may end up fighting so there's going to be a bit of back and forth, a bit of talking and all the rest of it. That's what, that's what they're supposed to do, sell a fight. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a humongous fight if they do end up fighting. However, um, you know, I've got a lot of love and respect for Tyson. That will never change. I've got a lot of love and respect for AJ. Um, the two great people, 
you know, I've never ever had a bad word to say about anybody that I have worked with. I, I like to think that nobody's had a bad word to say about me either. Don't know about only that. boxing fans. <laughs> yeah, only boxing fans. But I mean, the lads that I've worked with. So, um, you know, that's how it should be, you know, and, and we should respect each other. And uh, I, I'm really pleased that that's how it is. I know I'm looking miles ahead and I, I shouldn't do, and you're welcome to back the question off, but do you think if that fight happens, you would feel awkward about being in AJ's corner? Because we know you lived in that man's house. You brought him back from God knows the, the depths. He, well, we know what the depths, he's, you know, he's talked about it. And you was there all the way with him. To be honest with you, we just focused on France and gone on Saturday night. You know, we've got a, a mountain of a man in front of us and uh, we've got to deal with that before we even look anywhere ahead. So just fully focused on that. A while back when we was doing a, a Leewood interview and, and you said, oh, you know, leave, let's leave it and see how we go. We did ask you if you could give AJ a bit of advice right now, just, just casually sitting in the gym, what would it be? And I don't know if you remember, but I won't ask you, but have you been able to say that to him now? And, and has he been receptive? And does that sort of, has, has, it, has it come into fruition how you thought the relationship might work? Yeah, that, that slogan that, that you, you're talking about there, that, that is still the centerpiece behind most of the things that we've focused on with, with AJ. So, um, like I say, he's, he's really respondent. He's an absolute pleasure to work with, extremely coachable, absolutely loves the sport, which, you know, excites me, makes me really passionate, makes it really enjoyable. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, it's a pleasure to work with. You know, I can't say any more than that. And when, when you look at the lads that you've brought through, or, you know, you've got famous with Billy Joe, you've had Josh Taylor, you've done amazing work with Lee Wood, all smaller weights. You've obviously worked with Tyson, but he was a bit of a different boxer back then. What's it like being able to without over-egging it, be the puppet master behind an 18, 17 stone monster with, with the power that AJ's got. I mean, how are your shoulders and your wrists? But also, how much of a, a great challenge is it? Almost like a young manager being given a, a Premier League football team. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I've worked with... I've been involved with two fighters that become undisputed champions already before working with, with AJ. You know, Lee Wood, world champion, Devin Haney, um, Josh Taylor, Billy Joe Saunders, as you mentioned, Tyson, so... You just, I treat every fight the same, if I'm honest. If it's a four round, a six round, a world championship fight, I'm passionate about what I do, so I really enjoy it. Um, physically, yes, very challenging. He's clipped me a couple of times. Thank God he's, been, he's pulled them slightly. Um, sometimes I've not been braced with a body belt and felt a few of them, but uh, you know, he, he's obviously an absolute monster. So physically it's demanding, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll stick the body belt on Barry and let you have a rest. Yeah, definitely. Um, one last question, Ben, because I know you've got to go and do your work. For some reason, and boxing fans are the most fickle sports fans probably ever, but I do sometimes see people have a dig at you Oh, he's pla or a plastic band, or a boxer-sized band, and he's smug. And honestly, every time I've had a chat with you, you've always been very polite and helpful. And it's rare when someone says, I don't want to do interviews, and you do it in a polite way. So why do you think that weird sort of anti-Ben sentiment has come from? It clearly doesn't bother you too much, but for a nice fellow, it, it must just sort of be a bit strange for you. Yeah, I would say uh, I was young when I first come onto the scene. I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have a... A family member that was involved. I didn't, you know, people didn't know who I was. I just popped out of nowhere onto this big stage, and uh, I probably did talk too much when I was younger. I was 24 years old at the time. Like everybody, we learn, we mature, we grow up, and um, I've learned along the way. And no, I probably do a little bit less talking now, and that's something that I've learned. I'd say. Um, so, look, it's part and parcel. The people behind the camera don't really know the person in front of the camera um, and that's why sometimes when they have these opinions yes it can be disappointing you want people to think well of you everybody would They're not going to deny that but you can only take it with a pinch of salt because they've never spent a day in the gym or never spent 10 minutes with me so you can't take too much into some people's opinion but some people speak really highly and some people probably over, over, over overestimate sorry overrate me as well so um, yeah take the good with the good with the bad